Okay, so we're spawning logs, and I'll show you what it looks like. I've got this hooked up to uh, just the key press of button number one. You can see it spawns some logs, and I can keep on pressing it and spawn as many as I want. And they have collision, and they've got physics. And I can just keep on doing as much of that as I want to. Notice that they're also different sizes and so forth, different scale. Okay, so how did I do that? Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, what I did is I started by getting a log, uh, just a, from Megascans, this log here. I did have to add collision to it because it didn't come in with collision. So just make sure that your mesh has collision. And I also um, downloaded uh, from Megascans this little uh, modular fence area here to simulate sort of uh, the area that uh, is in your level. Anyway, uh, I had to add collision to that also, or else the logs would roll just right through it. Um, I made a blueprint uh, just called Spawnable Log, and all I did is I added a static mesh, and uh, I had already added collision to it, so um, that's all that's in this blueprint is the mesh. Uh, I did enable physics right here, and I just set the mass to 500 as a guess. Okay, so um, you can mess around with that if you wish. So that's now a blueprint, and I don't need that open. I did most of the implementation here in the character. It doesn't need to be in the character. This could be in a separate spawner. Uh, and you could make a custom event and just, uh, you know, call that custom event however you want. But I did it here in the character just so I could use an input for it. So I have uh, uh, number one on the keypad and I've got a for loop. I made a variable called number of logs to spawn and it's just an integer and the number of logs to spawn defaults at 10. But, you know, I've made this uh, instance editable and, uh, and by the way, uh, the... Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be 10, it can be any number you wish. So that's just the default there, and we can always change that. Anyway, so it's going to spawn, every time I press the number 1, it's going to spawn this number of logs. Okay, so I'm spawning that uh, blueprint, spawnable log, that's the one I showed you a moment ago that just has the, uh, um, it just has the, um, you know, the, the mesh in it, and I was able to just find it, uh, just use the, uh, Use asset browser selection. So the way that I hooked that up is I didn't do any, uh, I didn't connect any node to this. I didn't make a variable for it. All I did is I selected it from my uh, content browser, uh, uh, spawnable log, and I used the use uh, asset browser selection. So I just popped that in there. Okay, so now as far as the transform stuff is concerned, um, I made a variable called spawn transform. And the way that I did this is, um, in this particular case, I just temporarily put down a target point and uh, I got the transform information from that. Uh, mostly it was just this location that I, that I really needed from that. Um, and uh, of course, if this was a separate blueprint, you would just use the location of the blueprint itself, okay? But this uh, target point just allowed me to copy the location. And after I copied that location, um, you know, when I was working out the uh, uh, transform of the uh, variable, um, I just pasted most of that information in here. And uh, I think that might be, let's see, yeah, that's what I did. Okay, so I've got the uh, transform here. I split the struct so I could get just the location, and I'm adding, uh, for the spawn transform, I'm adding a random float in range to the current uh, uh, X and Y locations. I probably could have used the same node here. I am using the same values, but they don't have to be the same values, so you can play around with that. So uh, from negative 250 to 250, that was just a guess. Once again, I did not play with this very much to determine what was best, but we added that value and that becomes uh, the spawn transform for the location on the X axis and the Y axis did the same thing. And for the Z, um, I think I just took the transform and I added, oh yeah, that's what I did there. I added uh, 
uh, 25 to 100. Okay, 20, I probably could increase this upper number here, but the reason that I started with 25 is because um, if I get the transform of the uh, target point, notice that uh, the just the elevation of the landscape at that point was just over 20. So that's why uh, when I go and play, they seem to just sort of drop a little bit. Okay. And uh, the larger number of the two should be large enough so that, um, uh, let's see, the Z uh, right here, okay? Uh, if I wanted them to be able to pile up higher and higher, um, then I could set that to something higher, like 250, let's say. And we'll try that. Of course, then they start up higher in the air. There's probably a better way to do that. So uh, let's uh, uh, reset that to... Where? Where am I here? Uh, that is the spawn. Oh, my poor vision. Spawn transform. I've got to trace this backwards right here. 250 was way too much. Let's take that back down to 100. Compile and save. Try it again. Back to where I was, basically. All right, but that looks pretty good. Um, like I said, I did have to add a collision to the... Uh, log meshes and to the fence otherwise they would just intersect with one another and uh, you know roll right through the fence itself okay so I can just keep on doing that and oh yeah um, the uh, spawn rule the collision collision handling override I have this set to try to adjust location don't spawn if still colliding uh, that's important uh, if you have it uh, set to any other to, to anything else here, you're either going to have them not spawn at all. You say always spawn, ignore collisions, they'll, they'll intersect. Try to adjust location, but always spawn doesn't always work. So uh, I try to adjust location and don't spawn if still colliding. That, that seems to be the most reliable way to go. Okay, so what else can I tell you? I just uh, used self as the instigator, and I'll leave this blueprint up for you to look at for a second if you want to try to reproduce the same thing. And like I said, uh, this is inside of my character, and I did that just to make it easy to use inputs for this. But again, uh, this could be in a separate spawner, and instead of having uh, an input, it could be a custom event. And then you can put that spawner wherever you want. You would not need this variable anymore because the transform would just be the transform of the spawner itself. And you could split all those structs and get the same values that I'm getting from this transform variable that I made. Okay, so uh, one last time. Let's drop some kids off at the pool. And that looks pretty all right to me. All right. Uh, oh yeah, I, I also did uh, some random uh, scaling here. I did want it to be uniform, okay? So uh, for the transform scale, X, Y, and Z, I did one random float and range node for that, okay? And uh, I guessed at the values for that, just so that the logs would be varied in size randomly. And I've got the return value plugged into the X, Y, Z scale values. And also for uh, rotation, I'm only only rotating the uh, the Z axis here. Okay, only rotating the Z, and I made a uh, uh, another random float and range zero to one eighty for that. Okay, that's why they have a uh, random rotation. Okay, do do do. It's fun. Okay, so I hope that is at least close somewhat close to what you're looking for. And even if it's not, maybe it'll give you some ideas. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.